Hi, this is Mr. McGovern in the fourth video in the Beats of the Standing Wave series. So in the last video we looked at waves on a string, uh, the standing waves on a string, and now we're looking at waves and pipes. So we're really looking at sound waves, and the two types of waves, uh, pipes we look at are open pipes, with two ends open, and a closed pipe, so one end open and one end closed. Um, so a, a quick note first is that when a wave hits an open boundary, now this is different than a fixed boundary we had before, but when it hits an open boundary, the reflection has the same phase. And um, the open end of a pipe can be thought of as an open boundary. So what that means is um, a closed end of the pipe is uh, the same as a fixed string. We always get a node. But the open end of the pipe is the opposite. It's an antinode. And so that gives us different patterns of standing waves in our pipes than we had on our string. So, um, for example, this is a closed pipe, so one end's open and one end's closed, and you see at the closed end there's a node, and at the open end there's an antinode, and an open pipe has two open ends, and they both have antinodes at each end. So, with our closed pipe, it turns out that the solutions, or the waves, the standing waves that we can fit in here, um, there's only a, a couple of solutions, not as many as with, um, with the fixed um, string, for example. So the first one has, um, that's only a quarter of a wave. If you were to keep tracing this wave and keep going around with it, you'd find that it, this is only one quarter of it. And so that's how I write it. Instead of writing lambda equals 4L, I write um, L is equals one quarter of a wave. This one down here, it turns out if you keep following this around and then up again, you really see that you've got three quarters of a wave there. Um, again, this is algebraically equivalent to the other way it's written, but I like the way that I've got it up here. And the last one here, there's one full wave and a quarter. So there's 1.25 um, waves. In our open pipe, and we've got to have an antinode at each end, the solutions we have, or the standing waves we can fit in there, uh, this is um, half a wave. We can fit in a full wave. So you see that this one here is um, lambda over 2, and then lambda is double, half to 1. And the next one is 1.5, 2, 2.5. You see the pattern here? Half, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5. This is why there's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Because the fifth harmonic down here is five times bigger than the first one. This is why we, we don't have a name for the, um, the one that's missing here. Because the first one's a quarter of a wave in the closed pipes, but the third one is three quarters of a wave. It's three times bigger. So that's why it's called the third harmonic, because it's three times bigger than the, um, than the first harmonic. So again, you have to know these off by heart or be able to draw them. And after you draw them, you need to be able to write how many waves there are so you can do any calculations. Bit of an extra for experts. Um, so this is excellent students or people going for scholarship. We've got this idea of displacement nodes versus pressure nodes. All right, so this, is, um, this diagram here is an open pipe. It's an open pipe because it has one end on the right is closed, but this end here is free to move, so that's considered an open pipe. Um, we've got the node at the close, closed end. A node means that... Um, particles there, let's see the particle that's closest to there basically doesn't get displaced at all, doesn't move, and an antinode at this end, the particles can move a lot at the left end. So these, um, what I'm talking about nodes and antinodes, they're displacement nodes, okay, they're talking about how far is the particles being displaced. So let's look at one of these particles, this red one in the middle here, and you see that it's a displacement node, it's not moving at all, right, and that lines up very nicely with this, this um, sine wave, standing wave and it's the node of the displacement wave, right? But the pressure at that point changes a lot. What do I mean by pressure? Pressure is um, effectively the density of atoms. High pressure is lots of atoms squashed together, low pressure is um, atoms spread apart. And if you just concentrate on where this red thing is, you see it goes from um, being um, squashed together, lots of atoms to spread apart, to squash together, to spread apart, to squash together, to spread apart. So it turns out that this is a displacement node, but it's actually a pressure antinode. Let's look at um, this red one here, which is moving a lot. I've got the red line here to help you see where it is. Um, it's a, a displacement antinode. It's moving a lot, so it's an antinode. It moves, yep. Um, but the pressure at that point does not change. You just follow this red dot and look at the um, dots around it. How many dots around it stays the same the whole time? even though that they're all moving together. So this is a displacement node. Sorry, it's a displacement antinode, but it's a pressure node. So displacement nodes and pressure antinodes, um, they're equivalent and vice versa. Pressure nodes are displacement antinodes. 
all NCA questions I've seen, they just say displacement nodes, and you just treat it as, as you would do with all the diagrams we've been drawing so far. However, I have seen at least one scholarship question ask you to explain the difference between the depression, um, pressure nodes and displacement nodes. So that's why I've put this little bit into the end of the video here.